Abbott and Costello program, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service according to actual sales records. See if your throat and your taste don't make Camel a first with you, too. Find out for yourself. <laughs> Listen to the great rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes. And that great statesman from the Dumbarton Oaks Conference who said, Costello, Costello, come here a minute. Come here, will you please? What's all the excitement about? Uh, what are you so happy about? Oh, look at it. What? I just got a letter from my cousin, Corporal Hugo Costello. Yeah? He's away over in Africa, and he says all the soldiers in his company are going to have a white Christmas. Why, you dummy, it's very hot in Africa. How, how could the soldiers have a white Christmas? Their cook is going to bleach the beans. The, uh... <laughs> Costello, it's about time you were thinking of Christmas. Do you realize there are only eight shopping days left? You know, I just bought... I just bought a hundred Christmas seals. A hundred Christmas seals? Sure. For goodness sakes, how are you going to feed them? I... I, I no, no. <laughs> Look, Costello, are you going to make much out of Christmas this year? Am I what? Are you going to make much out of Christmas this year? I can't tell until I sell the presents I get. I... <laughs> Sell your presents? Oh, sure, Rabbit, sure. What are you talking about? I even sold that electric bed warmer you gave me last year. That was no good. Uh, electric bed warmer? That was an electric toaster. An electric toaster? Certainly. No wonder it kept turning me over and throwing me out of bed. <laughs> well, well, Costello, I hope you're getting a present from my wife, Betty, this year. You know, <laughs> and I'll give you a little tip. Go ahead. Uh, what she really needs is a new girdle. A what? Uh, uh, a girdle. Don't you know what a girdle is? Oh, sure. A girdle, it's, it's, it's one of those... Well, um, what is it? You gotta have it when yes, you... Yes, yes, what is it? If you don't, you're, you're sort of got yes, to... Yes, that I know. Come on. You got to... Uh, well, what is it? It's one of those things that keeps an unhappy situation from spreading. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, what about your own family, Costello? What are you going to give your kid brother, Sebastian? Oh, him? Nothing. What do you mean? I gave him something last year. He didn't like it. Then what did you give him? The measles. <laughs> And did he use a rash word? Oh, talk Ooh. sense, please. Listen, this year, Abbott, you know what I'm going to do? No, I don't know. I'm going to spend all my money on that beautiful girl who lives next door to me. Ruby Pool Q. <laughs> Wait a minute. Ruby Pool Q? She's beautiful. Why, she isn't beautiful. She is. She's got the worst complexion I ever saw. Well, she can't help that, Abbott. I mean, she got her face caught in a waffle iron. Now she has to pour her makeup on with a syrup pitcher. <laughs> Look, uh, what are you going to buy for Ruby? I'm going to buy her a piano. Uh, a piano? What kind of a piano? Maple, walnut, or cherry? Well, I'm going to get her one of those kind... What kind? What did you say? I said maple, walnut, or cherry. Maple, walnut... Do you realize what you just said? Uh, well, what's wrong? Shame on her! Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Shame on Bonnie! What, 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 well, wait a what minute. you said? Now, take it easy. Take it easy. In front of Ken Niles, <laughs> our announcer. No. Shame on Bonnie! Now, wait a minute. Lou, oh, oh. All right, all I said was maple, walnut, or cherry. Here you go again. I'm glad I found you out, Abbott. What do you mean? Now, what do you mean? You're a spy from the Jello program. Uh, now, please, please. A maple, a walnut, or cherry. Now, look, 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 wait a minute, look. I, I simply ask you the kind of wood. Oh, wood? Yes. Well, I know about, about the wood. What, do you think I am, a woodpecker? No, certainly you not. Do you think I go around tasting pianos? Did I ask you that? Do you think every time I see a piano, I bite it to see what flavor it is? Look, Costello, they, they make pianos out of different kinds of wood. My mother-in-law's piano is maple, so she has a genuine bird's eye. I know that. And she's got an eagle beak to go with it. Yeah, look. <laughs> now, never mind my mother-in-law. Now, you've got a lot of nerve spending your money on Ruby, a girl you hardly know. You never thought to ask me if I needed money for my Christmas shopping. Do you need money, Abbott? Oh, well, now, <laughs> now... Now that you brought it up... Uh, now that I brought it up! Uh, well, yes, you, you... Didn't you just ask me if I needed money? Ladies and gentlemen, you have just seen what loose talk can do when it reaches the enemy's ears. Uh, uh, now, wait a minute. A slip of the lip can sink a ship. Now, wait... And I have just been scuttled myself. Now, look, look, look. <laughs> look, Costello, all I need is $50. $50? Uh, yes. Now, look, if you lend me $50, uh, what security would you want? A padlock, a pair of handcuffs, and a watchdog. No, no, no. And put your mama in a dungeon for security. Now, look, look, look. With your father. Well, now, listen. The only security I can give you is the word of an honest man. Okay, bring him around. I'll see what I can do now, for hey, you. Now, look, Costello. You and I are pals. And to show you how much I like you, I'm going to let you lend me the $50. But, Abbott, all I got in my Christmas piggy bank is $40. Well, all right. Give me the $40 and you can owe me the 10 Okay, here's the $40. Okay. Now I owe you 10 That's right. 
Who owns who, now, Ken? Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. Wait. How much did I ask you for? You asked me for $50. And how much did you give me? I gave you all I had, $40. So you owe me $10. Well, that's right. Well, why are you? I mean, all right. After all, all right. Let it go with that. All right. You owe me $40. Costello, I don't like the way you're hedging on me. And I don't like the way you're clipping my head. Ah, oh, come on, please. Take it easy. Give me back my $40. Oh, okay, okay, if that's the way you feel. I don't want to do business with a man like you. Here's your $40. Well, right. That's more like it. Uh, now, give me the 10 you owe me. Okay, here's the 10. All right. I'm paying you on account. On account. On account. I don't know how come I owe it to you. <laughs> Believe me, this is the last time I'll ever ask you for the loan, loan of $50, Costello. Abbott, look. No, please. never mind. How can I lend you $50 now? Uh, I only had $40 to start with. So? Now I only got $30. Uh, well, okay, if it'll make you happy, I'll do you a favor. Give me the $30 and you can owe me 20 This is getting worse all the time. Now, wait a minute. Now, what's the matter? First I owed you 10 now I owe you 20 What kind of racket is that? Uh, well, why do you let yourself run into debt? I didn't run into it. You pushed me. <laughs> Abbott, did you ever hear the story of the 40 Thieves? Well, yes. What became of the other 39? Uh, <laughs> tell her I do the guy that says, open... Says to me. Now listen, I, I'm surprised. It's I you. had lived that. It's not Costello, good. Tell I'm surprised. Here. Please. Why I'm I, I'm just like Santa Claus. You're better than Santa Claus. You bet I am. You can give me a sleigh ride without any reindeer. Oh please. <laughs> you know it's never very easy to get serious after an hilarious to do with Bud and Lou. But your choice of a cigarette is so important to your throat and your taste that I want to take this moment to urge you to try camels on your T-Zone. That's T for throat and T for taste. See how your throat reacts to camels' cool mildness. See how your taste enjoys the rich, full flavor of camels' magnificent blend of costlier tobaccos. You may find that your throat and your taste, your T-Zone, proclaim camel your own personal cigarette. C-A-M-E-L-S Camels, the cigarette of costlier tobaccos. Here's lovely Connie Haynes with her Christmas shopper special. So grab your bundles, everybody, and let's all take a ride on the truck. With my high starch collar and my high top shoes And my hair piled high upon my hair I went to lose a jolly hour upon the trolley And lost my heart instead With his light brown derby and his bright green tie He was quite the handsomest of men I started to yen, so I counted to ten Then I counted to ten again Clang, clang went the trolley. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. Zing, zing, zing went my heart string. For the moment I saw him, I fell. Chug, chug, chug went the motor. Bump, bump, bump went the brake. Thump, thump, thump went my heart string. When he smiled, I could feel the car shake. He tipped his hat and took a seat. He said he hoped he hadn't stepped upon my feet. He asked my name. I held my breath. I couldn't speak because he scared me half to death. Buzz, buzz, buzz went the buzzer. Plop, plop, plop went the wheel. Stop, stop, stop went my heart string. As he started to leave, I took hold of his sleeve with my hand. And as if it were planned, he stayed on with me. And it was grand just to stand with his hand holding mine to the end of the Costello, come on, let's go downtown, do our Christmas shopping. Here comes the streetcar. A clang, clang, clang with the trolley. Right. A ding, a ding, a ding with the bell. Costello, Costello, come here. You want to get hit? Get out of there. Come over here. Stand here in the safety zone. You know what? In the safety zone. Don't you know why those safety zones are here? Sure. If you get hit inside the white lines, it don't count. Oh. <laughs> Be quiet, please. Uh, here's the trolley now. Hey, Abbott. What? Look at the crowd on that streetcar. Never mind. Go on. Shove your way in. Oh! 
Oh, young man, you can't squeeze in here. Okay, babe, let's wait till we get off. <laughs> you got your one line, get your dough, and get... <laughs> hey, you, fat boy. Come on, drop your fare in a box. Now, here's the fare conductor, and give us two transfers. You won't need transfers. No? Then how are we going to ride on the next car without a transfer? Just tell the next conductor that awful sent you. <laughs> Uh-oh. That guy's off his trolley. Oh. Come on, Costello. Let's step back in the car and find a seat. I... Hey, uh, look, look, look out for that man with an umbrella. Oh, my goodness. What happened? Somebody just took my seat. I... <laughs> Say, you little short fat man. Can't you reach that strap? I think so. Then would you mind letting go of my garter? <laughs> They shouldn't let these tall people on streetcars. You shouldn't bring me on these crowded streetcars, Abbott. My Uncle Artie Stebbins got his eye hurt in this crowded streetcar. Got his eye hurt? Yep. He had his eye on a seat, and the fat lady came along and sat on it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, look, look, stop this nonsense here. Here, the car's stopping. Here, let's get off. We're far enough downtown anyway. Okay, come on, get off, get off, get off, okay, get off. Okay, don't push, don't push. I'm don't not pushing, get off. Hey, Abbott, look. what? There's a pet shop. I think I'll go in and get my mother a squirrel for Christmas. She needs a squirrel to help her do housework. Oh, how could a squirrel help her with the housework? Well, she can tie his tail up and let him run between the Venetian blinds. <laughs> uh, don't be silly. Let's go in here to Bingle's department store. Hey, Abbott, Abbott. What? Look who's standing there with a carnation in his buttonhole. Hey, it's your kid brother, Sebastian. Come here, Sebastian. What are you doing in Bingle's department store? I'm a handyman, Uncle Bud, and today I'm working as a floor walker. How can you be a floor walker? You're too little. Well, they need a little guy like me. You see, when the people block up the aisles, I bite them on the leg and keep moving. <laughs> Costello, your kid brother has no business in this store. He should be in school. I ain't gonna go to school no more, Uncle Bud. School is nothing but a racket. School is a racket? Yep, the kids do all the work and the teachers get paid for it. <laughs> anyway, I had a fight with my teacher. A fight? Yeah, this morning I held up my hand and the, and, and the teacher said, Sebastian, do you want to leave the room? And what did you say? I said, you don't think I'm standing here hitchhiking, do you? Now, look. <laughs> Sebastian... She let me go! All right, all right, I can imagine. Listen, Sebastian, now, if you don't go back to school, I'm not going to give you this beautiful animal picture book for Christmas. Oh, now. but let me see no. the animals. Oh, isn't that a pretty nice yeah. book? Isn't it pretty? What's the name of this animal over here, Uncle Bud? Oh, you should know the name of that animal, Sebastian. Just look at that graceful body. The slim legs and the long antlers and... I, I don't seem to recognize it. Oh, come, Sebastian. You know this animal's name. Here, I'll make it easy for you. Uh, what does your mother call your father? Don't tell me that's a louse. Hey, look. <laughs> hey, Abbott, I gotta beat it. Here comes the manager. Hey, I'm Rancho Grandi. As a manager, I'm dandy. Woo, woo, woo. Ketzel, don't tell me you're the manager of Bingle's department store. That I am, that I am, my little man. I'm in full charge of the dry goods department. How about sundries? Sundries is my day off. I, oh. <laughs> well, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Here I got some delicious pajamas for only $30. $30 for pajamas? Yeah. Look, Kitzel, mm -hmm. here's $15. Just give me the top half. Huh? I'll send it to my Uncle Mike Burrell in Patterson. Oh, Costello, you can't send just the tops of the pajamas. Oh, sure I can. I'll put a card in it that says... Merry Christmas from the waist up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Costello, you've only got $40. And remember, you wanted to buy an easy chair for your father. Woohoo! And I've got just the easy chair you're looking at. That's a genuine mohair. The seat is covered with mohair, the back is covered with mohair, and it's got a footstool also covered with mohair. Everything is covered with mohair. Uh huh, yeah. I'll bet Mo hasn't got a hair left in his head. <laughs> <laughs> Mo hasn't got a hair. That's a slick one. <laughs> so is Moe's head. <laughs> Look, Costello, how about that piano you wanted to buy for your girlfriend, Ruby? Oh, -hoo, now you're talking my language. You know, I'm the head fish in the piano department. The head fish? Yeah, I'm a piano tuner. Don't oh, all right, all right. I don't to worry. You know, today I got a special on a slightly used player piano with three dozen piano rolls. Oh, I bought a bunch of those, those music rolls last week. And I papered my bedroom walls with them. And boy, were they noisy. Noisy? Yeah, every time I sneezed, the walls played, Milkman, keep those bottles quiet! <laughs> Headline 
headlines on front pages, cartoons in the magazines, photographs in the picture publications, all saying the same thing, cigarette shortage. Well, no need to tell you how many cigarettes are going overseas and how much more the people on the home front are smoking these days. And so it's inescapable that sometimes your dealer has to say, no camels today. But remember this. Paste it in your hat and write it in your notebook. Camel's rich, full flavor and cool mildness make them worth asking for the very next time you buy cigarettes. War or peace, Camel is still Camel. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels, the cigarette of costlier tobaccos. While Abbott and Costello are shopping for an old-fashioned Christmas, Freddie Rich plays an old-fashioned song, Whispering. Costello, please, do you realize we've been walking around the store for over three hours and you haven't bought a thing? I can't help it. I can't find a piano I like, and I don't know what else to give my girl. Well, uh, why don't you buy Miss uh, Pool Q a diamond ring and get I it I can't, over? I can't. I bought her a beautiful diamond ring last year. It was a beautiful 12-carat stone. Yeah. What a sparkler. It scares me every time she wears it. Are you afraid she'll lose it? No, but if she ever drops it, she'll have seven years' bad luck. I... <laughs> Look, don't be silly, Costello. Say, have you noticed how bright and... And, and happy and cheerful oh, all the shoppers Abbott, are. They you... should be. Have, have you noticed oh, all that? well, look at that gaiety. Yeah. They're all full of the spirit of mule tide. Yeah, the mule tide is all... The mule tide. <laughs> mule tide? Mule tide. You mean yule tide. I'll but... tide what? No, no, no. But speaking, speaking of mules, he... hey, here's the shoe department. Now, that gives me a very, very bright idea. Why don't you buy your girlfriend a pair of mules? A pair of what? What do you say to a pair of mules? I say, whoa, or get out. <laughs> I mean, if he's stubborn, I whip him. Costello, look, I'm talking about I get a, a pair... I jockey like Bailey, I put him on and whip him good. All right, look, at him in. Will you listen to me, please? I'm talking about a pair of bedroom mules. Oh, what? Bedroom mules. Bedroom mules? Yes. My wife has all kinds of mules in her bedroom. Red mules, green mules. She even has a pair of checkered mules. Abbott, did you see all these different colored mules with your own eyes? Why, certainly I... Well, why not? I see them every night. In fact, I saw them this morning. All the colored mules? Every one of them. Let me smell your breath. There you are. Oh, behave. Look, you dummy. Doesn't your mother have mules in her bedroom? No, my father's very particular. Uh, no, no. <laughs> when your mother gets up in the morning, what does she put on her feet? Corn plaster. That's the... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> please, please, no. She must have some kind of mules. Look, there are two kinds of mules. Silk and felt. Felt? Yes, yes. Yes. Hasn't your mother felt mules? No, sir. She never touches any kind of animal. Oh, come, come. Especially when she's cooking. No, no, look, look, look. Forget, forget about the animal, please. Look, every woman likes mules. My wife uses a pair of mules to go around the house in. What's the matter? Is she too lazy to walk? No, no. 
Look, when she gets up in the morning, she always slips on her mule. It's her own fault. Why don't she keep them out in the backyard? Right, listen, my wife needs her mules to keep her feet warm. You mean you all sleep in the same bed? <laughs> sleep in the same bed? My wife keeps her mules under the bed. For goodness sakes, don't the Board of Health complain? Oh, look, let's get the whole thing. Here I am trying to help you with your Christmas shopping, and what do I get? A lot of idiotic talk. Oh, pardon me, gentlemen. Is there anything I can do for you? We carry a full line of cosmetics, rouge, powder, lipstick, face cream, and cleansing tissue. Cleansing what? Tissue, tissue. Well, it seems kind of tilly, but if you want to kiss me, go ahead. <laughs> you kiss me and I'll kiss you. Costello, this lady is trying to help you. Uh, yeah. Now I... you stop talking like that. No, 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 no. She's trying to help you. That's what she's trying. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, no, yeah, she don't well, want to... I have some lovely perfumes here. Take a whiff of this. It's called One Night in Paris. One Night in Paris? Yeah. Take a whiff of this. My goodness, what is that? Five days at the racetrack. <laughs> Costello, look, let me handle this, please. Uh, look, madam, my friend here is a little confused. He doesn't know what to get his girl for Christmas. Oh, well, maybe I can help. I wish you would, please. Yeah. What kind of a complexion does your girlfriend have? Is she fair, dark, or medium? She's speckled. <laughs> speckled? Do you mean she has a complexion of an olive? Yes, ma'am. Pits and all. <laughs> well, from your description of the girl, I imagine she could use one of our facial kits. One of your what? Uh, the lady wants to sell you a kit. What I want to buy a kit for? I'm going to get married and have kits of my own. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You see, you don't understand. This is a beauty kit with full instructions. All your girlfriend has to do is apply some of this lotion. Then she covers her face with the white of an egg, some sour cream, and a cake of yeast. Oh, she did that once. Yeah, what happened? The next morning, she broke out in biscuits. <laughs> Kiss you. Oh. Get the kisser on. Oh. Never mind, quiet. <laughs> Never mind, no remarks, Costello, oh, please. You silly, silly boy, you tickle me. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> you tickle me first. No, 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 no. Hey, Abbott, you kiss her. I will not, please. Please. Where did I leave off? Costello, look, if you don't buy something pretty soon, I'm going to walk out and leave you. Oh, now, just a moment, boys. Now, how about something? <laughs> I found it. Go ahead. Yeah. What were you saying? I She's got a snood. Yeah? Well, is it a long snood that hangs down her back? No. It's a short snood that turns up at the end. She's a very snooty dame. Costello, the lady is talking about your girlfriend's hairdo. <laughs> yeah. What's your girlfriend's hairdo? What's her hairdo? Yeah, that's what I said. It comes out when she combs it. No. Costello, we're trying to find out how does she... How does she do... What does she do with her hair? Does she uh, pile it on top of her head or does she drop it down her neck? Or... She just hangs it in a cloth. <laughs> oh, no, no. You dummy, some... Some women... Look, some women wear buns in their hair and some have rats. Rats? Yes, yes. My mother had a rat in her hair for years. That's no way to talk about your father. Uh, look, Costello. Does Miss Poolcue wear her hair off her face? No, it takes too long to wear it off. She has to pull it out with a tweet. Hey, Costello, that's no way to talk about your girlfriend. That's slander. Slander? Yes. Don't you know what slander is? Sure. Slander. Yes. That's tall and skinny. And that has nothing to do with my girl. She's short and fat like me. Only I'm prettier than she is. Say, you say your girl is short and fat. Yes, I've got just the Christmas present for her. Our special weight-reducing machine called the Melt Your Belt Away Fat Cabinet. There it is, standing right there. Costello, that sounds good. How much does your girl weigh? 240 pounds with her girdle on. Well, how much does she weigh with it off? I don't know. She's never been able to get it off. <laughs> well, now, this machine will take your girl's fat off. If you don't believe it, get into the machine and try it for yourself. Now, that's no, no, fair no. enough. That's fair enough. I Go don't on. think I want to get in Go ahead, get in the machine. Abbott, I said I don't want to we'll get in there. We'll find out if it works. Get I in there. won't get, get in there. Go on, get in there. Get in there. I'll take it. There you are. Now, that's a good boy. Now, we'll turn on the machine. And you'll see how it melts the fat away in no time. Costello, Costello, where are you? Speak to me. Costello, where are you? I'm right here, Abbott. 
but all I see is a little puddle of water. Well, don't step in it. It's me. <laughs> Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week, tonight we salute Sergeant Benjamin F. Lambeth of Ashborough, North Carolina, awarded the Silver Star for his gallantry in action in Italy. In one mission, he is credited with killing 25 Nazis, wounding five more, and scattering the rest in confusion. In your honor, Sergeant Lambeth, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas... 400,000 Camel Cigarettes. Each of the three Camel Radio shows honors the Yank of the Week by sending free 400,000 Camel Cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the Camel Caravans, traveling from camp to camp, have thanked audiences of more than 4 million Yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week a rebroadcast to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore, Monday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks, and next Thursday to Abbott and Costello. And now, here are Bud and Lou with the final word. Well, Costello, you bought presents for everybody. I hope you're very, very happy. Abbott, I could be a lot happier. Oh, if I was only a nurse. I, uh, huh? A nurse? That's right. What would you do if you were a nurse? You know, Abbott, I read in a paper today that there's an urgent need for more Army nurses. Oh, yes, yes, I know about that. And do you know, Lou, that any nurse who enters the Army Nurse Corps now will enter with the rank of second lieutenant, and there is ample opportunity for advancement. You know, I hope that all the nurses that are listening in tonight will join the Army Nurse Corps and give their country the best Christmas present of all. Yes, girls, write immediately to the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington, D.C., or call at your nearest Red Cross chapter. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. And I hope Commander Holsel feels much better. Good night to everybody in Patterson. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show. And remember, try camels on your throat and your taste. See for yourself how camel's mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. Here's a Christmas gift that will bring the man who gets it a lot of pleasure long after Christmas is over. A generous pound or half-pound package of Prince Albert's smoking tobacco with the bright holiday band. Every time he packs and lights his favorite pipe with this favorite tobacco, he will think of your thoughtfulness. His taste will thank you for the full, rich, yet mild flavor. His tongue will thank you for Prince Albert's gentleness due to the no-bite treatment. Another thing men like about Prince Albert is the crimp cut, which guarantees perfect packing, smooth drawing, and even burning right down to the last puff. You really make a pipe smoker's Christmas merry when you give him Prince Albert tobacco. The Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.